Welcome to the Den of Tools. Howdy ho, guys and gals. It's Red, your friendly neighborhood tool bear, back again here in the Den of Tools. And this week we're here with another installment of The Good, The Bad, and yeah, The Ugly. But first, a word from our sponsor, that is the Home Distillers Workbook, your guide to making moonshine whiskey, vodka rum, and so much more. This is the best-selling book written on the art of craft distilling why don't you go check it out now? The links to it are below in the video description. And this week, we're highlighting one of our favorite stores, that is Ye Old Harbor Freight. Yeah, as you all know, the bear here has got a soft spot for Harbor Freight. Always been a big fan of theirs. But, you know, we got to be honest, there's <laughs> not all is great at the freight. But let's, when we talk about the good, we got to talk about stuff like the basic hand tools. The hand tools there are one of the first things that brought me to Harbor Freight. And I mean, look at this, a half inch, 25 inch long breaker bar for $9. They even have some great, you know, power tools, it, you know, as far as the DIYer kind of level, you know, here you've got a recip saw for $19.99. And one of the old standbys of Harbor Freight has long been this 21 gallon cast iron vertical air compressor for $159.99. In fact, you can often get this for under $150. Harbor Freight has long been the home of cheap tools. And for many reasons, it's either A, for people who are just getting started and they just can't afford something better, for the person who needs a tool, but they're not going to use it all that often, so they don't want to invest a lot in that tool, or even for the person who's like, I got one job I got to get done, and it, it would be expensive to rent the tool, or they don't rent this tool, and I can buy it for, from Harbor Freight for less than it would cost me to rent it. That has often been three of the big factors why people go to Harbor Freight, and, and let's be honest, it, it's brought them to where they are today. And and you can't talk about what's good at Harbor Freight without talking about cost affordable tools. All right. Now, next up is the second reason, actually probably the number one reason why I decided to try Harbor Freight and that is their warranty. You know, when you talk about the hand tools, they come with a lifetime, well, most of them I should say, come with a lifetime warranty. In fact, I would say they offer lifetime warranties on more tools than any other manufacturer at the retail level. Because if you look at it, like even the click type torque wrenches, that's something that even other companies that offer lifetime warranties on hand tools don't offer warranties on this. Uh, they also do it on stuff like their tap and die sets. And, and there's a lot of other tools that they offer warranties on that other companies simply won't. Now, way back in the, you know, the old yonder days, Sears was the home of the lifetime warranty for craftsmen. And that's where everyone would go. I mean, we all love nice trip to Sears, but Sears is not what it used to be. We gotta be honest. And before it even got to the state it was today, they started coming up with all sorts of little rules and regulations and reason why they just weren't going to honor that lifetime warranty, which was the reason, the first reason they got the bear to walk over to Harbor Freight in the first place. But, you know, there's, there's two parts to this warranty. Besides the lifetime warranty on hand tools, there's also most of the other tools come with their limited 90 day warranty. Now, to be fair, most items that are going to fail will fail within the first 90 days. That's usually the, the way of things. So that does cover most of the stuff. But I do hear a lot of people kibitzing that, well, Harbor Freight, you know, they don't really think much of their tools or they'd offer, a, you know, a full warranty like everyone else does. That, that's kind of a silly way to think about it and really not using your noggin there. If you think about it, Harbor Freight's giving you an option here. They're saying you can either put the money in your pocket or you can put it on the table and bet on the warranty. You get the option, we're leaving it up to you. Whereas if you go with DeWalt or Milwaukee or anybody else, they're like, nope, you gotta take the warranty. Don't think that warranty gets tossed in there for free. You're paying for that. You do realize that, right? I, you don't need a bear to explain that to you. The, the facts of life there, do you? Now, so when you sit there and you say, well, they must not think much of their tools. Here you got one company, like say DeWalt, that says you have to buy the warranty because they're not willing to have their tools stand on their own. Harbor Freight's willing to put it all out there and let it hang out, if you will. And the other part about that extended warranty is it's an instant return policy warranty. In other words, you walk in, put it on the on the desk, and, and you get a new tool and you walk out the same day, much like the lifetime warranty on the hand tools. Now, I get a lot of guys on here say, I won't go with Harbor Freight because I make money with these tools and I can't afford to be down. So I, I, I have to wonder... So you're willing to like box that tool up and send it off to DeWalt or Milwaukee or something and be without it for a week, two weeks. In, in many cases, like with DeWalt, uh, there's cases of, of six to eight weeks for tools to get replaced. Can you really sit there and be without a tool that makes you money for that long? I, I You know, these guys are telling me, well, this is serious. I need this tool. 
why aren't you going with Harbor Freight then? Because if you get the extended warranty, you walk in same day, walk out with the tool, you're back on the job site. Anyway, moving on. The next thing we got to talk about, and I've kind of hinted at it, is their new uh, their new approach to tools. Yeah, they used to have just the cheap tools. That, that, that would be called their, their good line. And now they've got the good, better, best. The whole Goldilocks approach. They, they, they want to cover it all. They're not abandoning the inexpensive tools, but adding to that. Where they're going to put it in some of these stores, I don't know. But they're definitely finding ways to cram all sorts of new tools into these stores. If you see here, we got the 12-inch miter sliding saws. This is one of the first tools I got from Harbor Freight. And I loved my 12-inch sliding miter saw. But I got to tell you, it, it, it doesn't come close to uh, compared to the, the Hercules that I've got now. And that Admiral, that's a nice little saw package right there. You know, yeah, now these are the full list prices. Sale prices or coupon prices are going to be cheaper. But the uh, the Chicago Electric doesn't come with the blade. The Admiral comes with the blade. You guys have all heard this before. But what it comes down to is they're giving you a choice. They're hitting different markets here. They're hitting the average just homeowner. They're hitting the prosumer middle of the road. And they're even, you know, going after that pro level uh, tool user there. And, and it's not just with stuff like this. They're doing it across the board. You know, back in the day, this this was your choice for cordless drills at Harbor Freight, the old drill master with its 20-pound NICAD battery. Okay, I exaggerate a bit. But, you know, now we've got, you know, that's been replaced by the Warrior, nice little 18-volt package. And then we've got the Bauer in their middle tier. And then, of course, the upper tier is the new Hercules line. Uh, okay, it's been out for a couple years now, but they revamped it, uh, you know, updated the image and such, and now offering it as, you know, a la carte options. So you can basically build your own toolkit. Gotta like that. So they're approaching this good, better, best across the board. All right, the next win for Harbor Freight is 1,000 stores. That That's a big mark for any retailer. Now, I will be honest, that still puts them about halfway if they're trying to catch up to the likes of Home Depot and Lowe's. And not anywhere close to, like, say, AutoZone or anybody like that. But at a 1,000 stores, that means that the majority of people living in the U.S. are within spitting distance of a Harbor Freight, or at least will be soon. And, and that means that when you do have that lifetime warranty or do have the extended service plan, it's not that far to go. You know, I walked into a Milwaukee service center uh, just the other day, and I was talking to him like, oh, how many of these authorized Milwaukee service centers are there in the U.S.? 19. 19 authorized service centers. That's a big deal between finding 19 places to drive to versus 1,000 places to drive to. All right, we've talked about the good. Now we got to be honest, and we got to talk about the bad. Yeah, and the first thing we got to talk about when it comes to bad is, oh my gosh, the off-gassing smell at Harbor Freight. Now, if you've only been to some of the newer stores, they're bigger they, they, they're new construction, they've got really good air conditioning and venting, and you may not notice it as much. But if you're one of the poor souls that's been to one of the older stores, oh my gosh, this, this is what my wife looks like before she'll go into a Harbor Freight. She can't, she can't stand, at least the older stores. The newer stores don't bother her so much, but uh, like when we lived in California, we had one of those tiny little shoebox style stores, and oh, you walk in there and you could not escape the smell of that recycled plastic. And it just drove her mad. It was ridiculous. But on a more serious note is, we talked about cheap tools before. Well, there's that's a two-sided coin. When you talk about cheap, sometimes you get cheap. Sometimes too cheap. And that's the other part of the bad side of Harbor Freight, which is often many of the tools are just a little bit on the too cheap side. Stuff like, uh, you know, this vice here that just cracked uh, many of the anvils. Uh, there's a bunch of tools. The air, don't even get me started on the air accessories. Regulators like this are just a, oh my gosh, it, it, it's like trying to uh, bail water with a with a colander. It, it, it just, it ain't going to happen. And, and, oh, this thing, this is just a hot mess waiting to happen. There, There's a lot of tools at Harbor Freight. They're just, they're just not up to even the basic standards. Now they're making things better and everything's getting, you know, upgraded as they go along, but they have thousands of tools, not hundreds, literally thousands of tools. So it may take some time to get around to it, but that's part of the reason why I started this channel was to help people find, you know, the diamond in the rough over at the old Harbor Freights. Well, then the next in the bad category, when we got to be, we got to face facts, man, it's coupons, coupons, coupons. Oh, look more coupons. It's ridiculous. It's like every day something else is going on sale or, or it should, I guess it's on sale almost every day somewhere in the U S 
they put out more coupons than anybody I've ever seen. And, and one of the worst parts is with these super coupons, if you look over here, look down here at the limit. One person, can, can you read any of that? Probably not. In fact, you'll need to pick up a pair of their magnifying glasses to read some of the small print and what's limited in these, you know, super coupons. Now, this may be a case where Harbor Freight has to do this because there's restrictions on how often you put something on sale. And let's be honest, part of the problem is you, the viewer, because you guys get suckered into the whole sale concept with other tools and they got to feel they got to catch up. So, you know, marketing only, they only keep doing marketing because it works. If it didn't work, hopefully they'd stop doing it. So maybe just having better, more savvy buyers would be a fix to that. But at the very least, maybe getting the Inside Track Club membership so that it automatically apply, applies coupons, that, that would be a big thing, huh? Forget the ads, just the marketing itself. Giant liquidation. Everything must go. Oh my gosh. Huge disposal sale. <laughs> it's like this company is constantly going out of business. Hello, going out of business. Can I help you? It feels like they hired the marketing department to handle the ads in the back of comic books. You know, I, I'm expecting to see ads for Sea Monkeys next. It's really, it's, it's kind of embarrassing for them. I'm embarrassed for them often. And it's not just ads. Oftentimes it's on the tools themselves. Here we see the original box that the Hercules tool came in. And you see down there, two times more power, 30% more compact. But And there's asterisks next to each of these. And if you go on the back of the box and you read it, it says, when compared to our average product. They're comparing their tools to themselves and to an average of the... Who does that? Now there may be some light at the end of the tunnel as this is the new revised version of the Hercules tools there. And as you see... They've done away with all of that. <laughs> Thank goodness, right? And next in the list of uglies, and while the marketing may be pretty ugly, it's something you can overlook. It's kind of like that friend, as I often say, it's like that, that buddy we all have who talks about all the hot women he dates and all the money he makes and all, this, all these giant big fish kind of stories. But you know what? He's always there to help somebody move or help somebody out or help clean up you know, the plates after dinner or something. He's a good guy. He just has a... A bit of an imagination, if you will. Well, this part is the part we can't imagine away, and that is replacement parts. Harbor Freight is woefully bad at replacement parts. Now, to be fair, they actually have a good bit more replacement parts than you might expect. I've heard people complain about U.S. General Toolboxes and stuff, and I'm like, I know for a fact they actually have quite a bit in the way of replacement parts for stuff like that. But for a lot of the other stuff, a lot of the power tools and such, if you want to fix it yourself, I'm sorry, but you're out of luck. It's not like, say, with DeWalt, when you can go to DeWalt and they have full schematics, exploded diagrams, and just an unbelievable assortment of replacement parts you can order directly online. Now, the good news is that Harbor Freight knows they have a problem here. And I, I've talked to them, and they recognize this, and they realize it's something that they've got to fix and they got to address. How soon and how well they address that well, that still is yet to be seen. So we got to be honest. Right now, this is the state we're in. Hopefully, it'll get fixed later, but you never know. Well, that's the good and the bad and the ugly at Harbor Freight. Why don't you comment down below? Let us know what you want me to cover next with our Good, Bad, Ugly series. And anyway, that's all we got for today. Don't forget to chomp the old like button over there. Just ah, give it a chomp. Maybe check out some of the merch. And uh, as always, take care, God bless, and shine on.